All right, so a little bit about us before we kind of dive on in. Um, our company was founded in 73. Same family owns us. Uh, we uh, had originally uh, uh, had developed our own financial system that was on a mainframe. We still support those customers today. Uh, that eventually evolved into an I-Series and then SQL shop. So we bring on customers here and there, uh, more of a boutique shop, just uh, catering to the GLA, PAR, and a little bit of purchasing. But as we noticed that some of our clients were moving off into um, you know, more ERP-related solutions like the, uh, the MAS products, uh, they had come back to us and, and talked uh, very highly about our reporting solutions. The reason because we, uh, you know, we had developed an Excel, uh, an Excel add-in that allowed to communicate live to our general ledger system. <clears throat> And, uh, and, they, and they spoke about how uh, beneficial this would be in, in the other uh, ERP systems because uh, one area that's always lacking is uh, reporting and, and, uh, and, and ad hoc, especially ad hoc reporting. So uh, over the years, uh, we've, de we've, we've developed this for uh, over 50 different ERP solutions to include SAP and Oracle and, and into the MAS and, and Sage products. Um, we've grown to about 4,000 customers worldwide and uh, uh, really claim ourselves to be the, the number one provider of Microsoft Excel-based solutions. <clears throat> All right, that's fine. So today we're going to be talking about our spreadsheet server application and a little bit on our distribution manager piece. I uh, just want to let you know that uh, we do have other solutions out there. Enterprise budgeting is another one that uh, goes uh, very well, uh, complements spreadsheet server allows you to do forecasting and budgeting. Uh, the spreadsheet server piece is our main focus because what we're here today <coughs> to show you is to give you a glimpse of the, uh, as a replacement to FRX. Or, uh, or just to, if you're out there looking for a, an Excel-based reporting tool. Uh, spreadsheet server, uh, as you'll see w w while Sherry walks you through the presentation, offers a live link back to the Sage system, uh, to your math system, right from Excel. So you're actually in Excel developing reports uh, the way that you want them, format them the way that you like, and then you save it, open it up next week, next month, and it just refreshes with live data and establishes a connection to the database that allows you to drill down to underlying detail. Uh, heavily beneficial because it requires very little technical resources to make any modifications to the reports or, or create new ones. As you'll soon see, it's, uh, as, as long as you know your chart of accounts, and, uh, and what you'd want to view, it's very, very easy to, to kind of put together uh, an actual report. We're going to be focusing on the GL portion of this. Um, though keep in mind that Spreadsheet Server has the ability to go after all the other areas of, uh, of the MAS mm -hmm. system and even outside of it. So if you have supporting, uh, you know, like supporting systems or, or legacy data that you'd like to report against, uh, certainly we can, if it's on a relational database, we can establish a connection to it. And, uh, and design dashboards and reports with our spreadsheet server tool. But today here, we're just going to show you one, one piece of it, which is the pre-built formulas to go against your MAD system. We'll then go into a little bit on our distribution manager application. Uh, it's very heavily used within our client base. Uh, it allows for you to develop reports the way that you like, set up a distribution list that will convert those reports to either PDF, HTML, or leave it in a static Excel sheet and send it off on a, you know, I guess a streamlined fashion to various folks or different locations. Um, so all throughout this, <clears throat> as we kind of walk you through these applications, you know, uh, hopefully we'll do a good job of, of giving you an understanding of what we have to offer. But certainly write down any questions or if you want to, you can leave uh, some questions in the chat and we'll definitely you know, answer those uh, when during the appropriate time or towards the end of the presentation. All right, uh, Sherry, are you there? Uh, I'm here. Thank you. Great. All right. Uh, if you want to take it away and share your desktop and. Okay. Sounds good. And uh, thanks again, everybody, for joining us. This, um, well, it's actually morning where you are, afternoon where I am, but. Um, I'm excited to show you our uh, spreadsheet automation solution we have uh, here at Global Cloud Spreadsheet Server. And as Paul mentioned, what we're able to do is establish a live connection directly between your um, instance of Excel and your back-end um, ERP. 
So in this particular case, I'm going to show you an example um, against a, a MAP 200 um, database. And the way that we're going to go after this information is we're going to use a formula approach. And what we're going to be able to do is to build a report one time in Excel and then have the formulas reference various parameters. And then as we update the parameters, then the reports are going to update dynamically based off those changes. So if I decide that I want to look at 2006, go back and look at 2007, maybe the month closes and I want to go and look at October, all of that's available to you just by changing those parameters within that spreadsheet. Um, the other thing that we're going to be able to do is to drill down on, on the information that's represented in the report. So one, here's an item here, uh, office supplies, got a $14,000 variance there. So maybe I want to get behind the numbers a little more. Maybe I want to just go ahead and drill down on that. So I just did a right mouse click, and we're doing what we call a spreadsheet server drill down. So it's showing me balance detail by GL account, department, or region for um, what's making up that total. And you can sort within these windows here. Um, you certainly could group and things like that. Um, but in addition to that, what I'd like to do is get down a little bit further into this $25,000 number. So I'm actually going to drill down into the journal. And it's going to show me all of the uh, journal entries that were making up that total in the report. So just that quickly, I'm down into the details but without ever leaving the confines of Excel. So that drill down process is going to actually take place within these windows and you can leave your reports there intact. What I'm able to do in addition to that is say select all that information. I can copy it to the clipboard or even send it out to an external file if I'd like. But what I'm going to do here is just copy to Excel Simple. I'm going to tell it to put it in cell A1, include the heading, and I want to put it in a new tab in my workbook. So I'm just going to call it new tab and say OK. So back behind there, you can see it actually took the contents of that window and pushed it directly out into the spreadsheet. So now I've got my hands on the raw data. I can uh, use it for reconcilement, pass it along to auditors, um, what have you. But the great part about that is that I didn't have to download that information and summarize it. I was able to pull it in directly from the system. So we like to actually call Spreadsheet Server of an end user tool. And, and the reason why we say that is because it's really going to be focused on the accountants and the, and the people that are going to be using the tool and assuming that they're not going to be technical. They're not going to know file names, field names, or anything like that. Um, and so really what they need to know is how to use Excel, and most everybody does. And in addition to that, they just need to know where their data is at and what their chart of account is. So what we're able to do here is just specify the balance type that we want to look at within the formula. I'm just going to hit F2 to give you a visual there. So I'm looking at actual in this column, budget in this column. I'm looking at budget version 1. I'm looking at it for year 2007. I'm looking for the period to date balance. If I wanted to look at quarter, year to date, life to date, range of months, you've got that capability. The accounting period. And then in this case, I'm looking at department 00. Um, down here on the left-hand side, a couple more parameters where I'm looking at um, a masking here of accounts is everything, every account that starts with 401. I've got a single account here for the discounts, um, 4020. Down here with the allowances, I actually have a range of accounts, 4040 to 4130. You can reference um, information in the spreadsheet by using account ranges and strings. Down here, I've got a grouping, includes two accounts. Or if you actually wanted to um, take advantage of some more functionality we have with our tool, you could use segment lists to reference that information. So say I wanted to create a new segment list and call it insurance. And so let's just call it a insurance, um, learn how to spell insurance um, expense. And then I'm going to add that list to the database, and I must already have one, so sorry about that. Insurance expense. Um, then we'll call it insurance expense all spelled out. And I'll add that list. And so it actually created that list. And now all I need to do is give it the value, 6118. I'm going to add that in. And 6120. I'm going to add that in as well. So I could add in as many as I needed. If I wanted to put in a range, I could do that. If I had values I wanted to exclude, I could do that as well. But what I want to do is actually insert that into the current cell. And you can see it actually put the words in there. Um, instead of using that range of numbers. 
So you can reference the information in the report by using the segment list capability, or you can put in the ranges and wildcards as, as we're showing you. The other neat thing about it is that when I drill down on this, it's going to use the criteria that I gave it. And if you decide, for instance, that you wanted to um, use these and lock them down, then we give you that capability to do that as well. So uh, pretty cool here where I choose the variant. And um, if I, of course, wanted to continue my drill down process, at that point I could do that. OK? All right, so um, the, the next step I want to take here is uh, how would you build one of these reports from scratch? And um, in most cases, um, Paul had mentioned that a, a, a number of you may be um, looking to um, move off of FRX onto some type of reporting solution. And one thing that we're going to be able to do is to actually take your report definition from FRX and really just insert our formula into your existing spreadsheet. So in order to do that, I'm going to actually just fill out some parameters here on this um, in, in this window. So the balance type that I want to look at um, is going to be actual. And then um, we'll look at uh, 2007. Um, let's just look at year to date, period five. Um, I can specify the segments that I'm using, account, department, and region. Um, from here, if I wanted to, say, bring in all of accounts that started with a five, um, and then if I wanted to even do a lookup here and pull in a, a certain department or a certain region. For region, I'm going to leave that as a wildcard mask. And as you're setting your reports up, you have the capability to decide whether or not you want to have parameters be at the row or the column level. And we just give you a toggle switch for that. So what I'm going to do is just put the department and uh, region at the um, column level. We'll leave the account at the row level. And then I'm just going to insert the um, formula. So it actually added in some additional rows and columns. It went ahead and put in all the parameters for me. Um, so it's giving me the sum of all accounts to start with five. As soon as I have that formula in place, then I can drill down on that. So really, um, just that quickly, I'm kind of off to the races in terms of building out um, various reports. So if I wanted to look at um, maybe month five, this year versus month five last year. Maybe I wanted to look at um, you know quarter two of this year. So let me just go ahead and put my two and my QTR. Oops, sorry. QTR. Then it's going to automatically recalculate the um, the value right there in the spreadsheet. So let me get up to. Okay. So any of the values that you've got um, represented, you're just using Excel. So you can just copy and paste if you wanted to add a column, if you want to compute a variance, um, any of that information that you want to try to do um, within your report ranges, you certainly have that capability. So let's just do 7,000 through 8,999 and see if we get any hits in that range. So right off, out of the box, right out of the gate, I've got a really quick and dirty um, report here, and then if I want to add in uh, sums, if I want to put in variances, all of that, you're just going to do what Excel does best, and that is um, add in additional formulas and functionality. And for presentation purposes, you have the graphs, the charts, everything um, at your fingertips that Excel provides. Um, what we're doing is just giving you additional formula capability, and we're not taking anything away from your current in instance of Excel. Um, one other neat thing that we can do with the tool is actually expand the rows um, and show the details for various numbers that show up. So in this case, I had that account range, and it's showing um, each individual balance. I can certainly drill down on any of those if I need to, um, so I can get a total. But then if I wanted to um, leave these in the report, I could just change the font, or if I'd like to collapse them back down and put my report back the way it was, then we have that capability there as well. OK. All right, so the other thing that I wanted to um, show you today is our capability to um, distribute reports, but really in a, a nice automated fashion, um, really cutting down on the, um, the, the amount of, of, of uh, manual labor and manual labor that you're going to have to do in terms of getting uh, your, your reports distributed to the masses. So you've, you've done a good job. You've, you've written all of your reports. You have great templates. Um, 
getting a lot of information. You've got the drill downs. You have all your variance analysis. But the hard part sometimes is that, well, how do I get this report out to people that need to see it? And as a part of our um, suite of um, tools, we have the distribution manager. And this is actually uh, one of my favorite parts about, um, about our uh, tool set. Um, what I'm doing here is I've just clicked on uh, Create a Control Sheet. And it's going to recommend a name for distribution control. And of course, I can change that to be whatever. And I'm going to tell it to create that. So what it's going to do is bring up this window uh, so I can uh, go and give it some instructions. So I can email reports out. I can save them out to a shared location. That can include a SharePoint server or any shared file server that you may have. And you can certainly print it to a printer if that's the way you uh, want to distribute. In addition to that, we have some grouping capabilities that really come in handy, especially um, cut, cutting down on the number of emails to, say, one recipient, um, or even the number of files. So it's kind of like a mail merge capability, and it's really, really neat. Um, just wanted to let you know we have that feature. Um, but let's say I want to email these reports out. Um, and then these are the file types that I can use. So I can save it out as any version of Excel, or I can save it as an HTML file or a PDF file. So really, you're probably thinking, well, if, since I can save it as a PDF or an HTML, then I can, I can send this information out in a static format. So the answer to that is absolutely yes, you can. Um, you can send it out as a live version of Excel that you would expect for the end user to have our add-in installed. Or you may have someone that you just need to get the answer to, and they don't really care to have all the extra functionality that comes along um, with Spreadsheet Server. So that's the first example that I'm going to use here. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to call this um, call this thing Income Statement um, Department 10. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to come out to this Income Statement tab, and I'm going to give it instructions. I'm going to say Go to Cell E8. I'm clicking, it's not going. And um, I want you to pass in the value of a 10. And I'm going to click Add. And then I'm going to close this up because I shouldn't have to come back out here. And this is the way it's going to look when the uh, individual receives it. And now what I'm going to do is select the tabs in the workbook that I want to include. So I'm going to include the income statement. Um, maybe if I wanted to send a balance sheet, I could. Um, I'm going to send some KPIs. And then in addition to that, maybe just that new tab. I want to send that journal detail. So instead of it being called uh, new tab, I'm just going to call it journal. As long as I learn how to spell it. There we go. You can actually hide the zero lines on any of the reports that you create. Um, and it'll do it at distribution. So if some of the information on that report is uh, not applicable, it'll actually hide the line on that, on that particular tab in the workbook. Um, so they're going to get um, three tabs in this particular workbook. It's going to be, um, we're going to convert formulas to values. And you have a couple options there as well. So you can copy and paste global formulas as values in the spreadsheet and leave your sums and your VLOOKUPs and all that stuff in place. Or you can do all formulas, and that would convert the entire workbook to values. Um, of course, there's always that no conversion option if you need it. So I'm just going to say global only. And then I'm going to tell it to recalculate the report. We also have capability to burst details out, some uh, uh, generate detailed listings. So if I had any of those, I could certainly just tell it to go ahead and do that as well. But what I want to do is push those instructions back out oops, into the um, tab. And it's telling me something very important. And that is that I didn't tell it uh, who I wanted to send this information to. So I need to send it out to a group of users, and they're out here in my address book, my Raleigh users. I'm um, going to give them a subject. We're just going to call it monthly report. And then a message of, uh, you know, reports are attached. Or you could do or find report, you know, here. And then just do HTTP colon slash SharePoint or, or whatever. So just an example of what you can put out there. Of course, I, I mentioned the grouping. And then let me jump out here to miscellaneous, because this is a pretty important thing as well. Um, you can put password protection on your files, uh, passwords to open and modify. And that can really protect the integrity of your information and um, you know, really ensure that people don't get a hold of it and make changes to it. 
In addition to that, if you have macros uh, that you want to use during your publication process, you can do that. And then if you have PowerPoints or Word docs or anything else that you want to uh, distribute along with your uh, report, then you've got that capability as well. So I'm just going to attach a Word document. So uh, I wrote up a financial statement explanation that's going to explain some of the variances on my report, and I'm going to attach that file. So we'll try that again. I'm going to come back out here and push those instructions out. So you can actually see, it put that information out there. My Raleigh users, there's the name of my report, Income Statement Department 10, um, make it an Excel file, change the global formulas to values. Um, now let's just say I wanted to come in here and do the same thing, except I want to do Department 25. So I'll remove this change the value here to 25, and um, go ahead and leave uh, the KPIs and the income statement, and I'll take these journals off. Um, what I want to do for this one is just change all formulas to values, and we'll go ahead and leave it as Excel, and then I'm just going to say insert after active row, and I'm going to push that uh, set of instructions out. Um, maybe the next one I want to uh, save a copy. Maybe I want to keep a PDF copy. All I would have to do at this point is just push those instructions out. Um, if I wanted to you know, go back and um, change an email or add another report. So all of that is gonna, capability is going to be available to you via the wizard that we've been using, or you can actually go directly into the spreadsheet and make whatever changes. So if I decided that I wanted uh, this one to be an Excel file and I don't want any conversion, I can make that change right here. I want to change the attachments or put in any passwords, you know, all of that you can do right out here. So you can reference external lists, you can do change, you know, your email recipients, whatever you want to do at that point. Um, you're just using Excel, and that's what makes this um, tool so powerful. But really just want to emphasize that we're going to offer you a one-click distribution. Um, you're going to come out here, check your reports, make sure everything's good, keep you out of the process of having to build those reports, but then once you're ready to send them out, then you're just going to come up here uh, to your toolbar and click on distribute. So when you do that, you can distribute all, which is will run through your entire list, or just select a few. Um, but depending on how you want to send it out, um, this is just a really quick and easy way to uh, take some of that manual work out of getting the, the report sent out to the group. Okay, so that's all I had. Um, Paul, if um, you wanted to me to jump back to the PowerPoint or if we want to take um, some questions. Um, yeah, I guess if uh, we can open it up for some questions. Uh, we haven't seen any in the chat function. Is uh, anyone out there have any questions for us? How uh, would the conversion from FRX be handled? Yep, very good question. Um, I, Sherry may be able to speak to this some. Um, uh, what, what she's doing now is inserting some columns and some rows. So typically, uh, you know, what we'd like to see is clients uh, show up to the training, which is one day uh, for this, uh, with a handful of reports that are in Excel format. And they could be, be just static reports, but we, we want to be able to keep the formatting that you're you know, familiar with and, and used to. Uh, and so we insert a couple columns, some rows up top, and then we start populating our formula into the appropriate cells. Um, but Sherry, if you want to walk them through just how you would do that. It, it's a pretty simple, quick process, uh, but we, we spend a half of the day in the training kind of as a transfer of knowledge on the different pieces of the product. And then we spend the other half uh, with a hands-on classroom-like environment where you know, different individuals are working on different reports, getting them converted. So you walk away with training with a, with a handful of reports ready, uh, but most importantly, the knowledge of, uh, of moving forward from that point. Um, Sherry, right. if you want to explain a little bit more. Oh, sure, yeah. Thanks, Paul. And um, so really the, the, the question you answered, Paul, uh, hit the nail on the head. But the other thing that we're going to actually be able to do and kind of take advantage of is some of the um, tree structures that you already have built within um, FRX. We can actually export those, um, put them directly in some spreadsheets if you want to um, reference them directly there. Or if you want to take some of the tree structures that you have pre-built already in FRX and export them, 
then we do have the capability to um, import some of that information into our database. So you've done a lot of work um, over there in FRX, and we don't want to throw all of it away. So we do allow, um, a, with you know, just a, a little bit of tweaking. I won't say you can, you know, it's not going to be. Uh, don't touch it at all. But really, what it's going to end up being is an edit replace or a formula replace, where we're just going to change the syntax a little bit. Um, but we are going to be able to leverage a lot of the work that you've already done with your current um, FRX deployment, um, just by you know, exporting some of that information out into your spreadsheet. Good question. What about consolidation? Like we have 17 animal hospitals that get rolled up into one consolidated statement. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, well, go ahead, Paul. Yeah, no, th well, there's a couple different ways to, to manage that. Um, you know, as uh, Sherry has here, she's looking at actual versus budget information. Um, you know, you can easily, just as easily, have uh, actual actual company or here or your departments on the column level. You know, that could be your company, the different uh, location. Um, so you can have. I'm not sure what we have in our database here, but um, uh, you can just have companies side by side and do a consolidated column. Or if it, it's all in MAS, all the same, uh, you can just really pull in all companies, uh, which would be like an asterisk. Or here she's doing a range. 00, zero company, you know, 299. So that's a consolidated, um, you know, I guess, summary view of, of all those uh, different locations. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Right. Yeah, and from here, when it's consolidated in this summary column, you could drill down and then um, uh, use the kind of, uh, I guess, you know, drag and drop approach of uh, you know pulling the different departments in and then having it sum up um, this way, or you can you know just do the side by side approach and drill down to the appropriate uh, department or location when necessary. Good, good. Any other questions out there? Well, maybe we'll jump over to the PowerPoint. We just had a couple pieces just to kind of, I guess, recap on before we end the call. Um, I know it was short and sweet, but it's a you know great product that uh, is uh, easily implemented. Um, you know, as we mentioned just a, just a moment ago, uh, we call it our quick start install. Uh, really, we get you prepared, installed um, uh, you know, before we even you know, step on sites, everything's through WebEx. Uh, and then when we're on sites, we we offer one, you know, really one day of training for this. We, we've stayed on later if necessary, if you feel like you need, a, you know, extra support in developing reports. Uh, and we can certainly do that, but most of our training engagements are, are one day for, a, you know, 10 users or so. Um, we like to leverage as many existing, you know, reports as you have. Uh, we don't want to come to you with canned reports that you need to learn. Um, we want to, uh, you know, work with what you're comfortable with. Uh, ultimately, with this product, you know, you're eliminating the need to kind of, you know, rekey, download information. Uh, that manual entry is, uh, uh, is really what, uh, you know, takes the most time and also has the most errors. Um, we are truly empowering the users to develop their own reports, you know, whether they're you know, FRX savvy right now, most reporting solutions you know, require somewhat of a technical personnel to either uh, develop templates and that's where where this is uh, really end users are doing that on the fly. Uh, what we're, the goal here <coughs> with all of it is time savings and then whether that's opening up a format a report the way that you like it and immediately viewing live information and that's where you know you can post a new entry and make an adjustment. You'll see that you know almost immediately within your report uh, with drill down capability, but also on the distribution side, uh, having to set up a, or the uh, ability to set up a distribution list and kind of streamline that approach is, uh, has been beneficial to our clients. <coughs> and uh, you know it increases departmental analysis and visibility. Um, we we see this as uh, really snowballing to some degree. Uh, you know, as we we kind of 
minimize the, the manual intervention that's needed in report writing, allow you to really do the analysis and focus on your job instead of you know, designing reports and putting those together. Uh, as you, you know, create more time in the day, uh, the complexity and uh, I guess the uh, information in those reports can, can really grow. So it's, uh, it's fun to see. <clears throat> Um, and then the enhanced uh, spreadsheet security, which I think we may have touched on to some. Um, you know, we have the ability to uh, uh, to really go even deeper than the um, uh, the credentials that are provided within the MAS system uh, through our own security and spreadsheet server. All right, next slide there. Okay, um, I guess this is most of the stuff we just talked about, but. Uh, results, you know, uh, clients uh, really eliminate the need for, you know, technical personnel to, uh, to be you know, kind of at their beck and call, uh, a lot of the users to really develop reports on their own. Uh, really combining reporting, account uh, inquiry, and, and journal inquiry all in one by uh, allowing them with the drill down capability to underline detail. Uh, they can leverage their own spreadsheet skills, which uh, a lot of Kids are learning these days in, in junior high and high school, uh, but you're able to you know bring that knowledge with you to the training, uh, able to write reports in minutes, especially with the reports that you currently have. Uh, clients stop downloading rekey information. Uh, it's kind of self-explanatory as the um, you know live connectivity doesn't uh, really require you to kind of data dump and force Excel to be another database to some degree creating pivot tables and, and uh, filters and that sort of stuff. Uh, consolidations, which we just spoke of, uh, easy way to do that. The, you know, definitely increase efficiency and timeliness of, of during the budget process. Uh, a lot of our you know, clients are using, even though we have our enterprise budgeting solution out there, you know, really <clears throat> there are some that use our spreadsheet server tool to create uh, budget templates you know, within you know the spreadsheets, where you pull in actual information and leave areas at the bottom where they can post in either uh, you know what what their expected uh, you know budget and forecast is going to be, <clears throat> and uh, you know you're able to publish executive quality reports within Excel because Excel offers you a lot of uh, ability or the um, uh, tools necessary to create graphs and charts that you know executives like to see. And uh, ultimately, go green. Uh, you, you reduce the waste. Don't have to print out plenty of reports and start rekeying them all in together to build uh, one massive uh, spreadsheet. So uh, all of this, um, you know, I think our next slide shows some of our clients that are currently using this. So Paul, we had a, a question um, about distribution manager and whether whether it's a separate purchase. It's not. Uh, all that's combined into one. So when you purchase spreadsheet server, you get the distribution tool with it. Uh, and, and that speaks a little bit to, you know, it, it can lead to, um, you know, what you get when you purchase spreadsheet server. If you, I mean, and if you opt into our support, um, you know, we offer 24-hour support, 365 days a year with a two-hour callback. That's what we pride ourselves on. Um, but we're always taking enhancement requests and, uh, and, and you know, we're constantly uh, doing QA with our products to, to, to better it. Um, distribution Manager came along about, I think it was about five or six years ago when we had plenty of clients that were coming to us with requests of you know easier way you know, besides just uh, doing a copy-paste special and saving a new spreadsheet and attaching it to an email. They asked us for a, you know kind of a streamlined approach of, of sending this information out. So we built Distribution Manager. <clears throat> And uh, it's a great standalone product because you can you don't have to use it with spreadsheet server, um, but because uh, it's just an Excel add-in, but it, it it works very well with it, and um, uh, it's it's one of the pieces that we pride ourselves on, you know, for our customers. But this is just a, a small group of customers that we have uh, out of the 4,000 worldwide, 4,000 plus, you know, Trader Joe's, Suzu, Ecolab. Um, whether it's large, you know, Fortune 500 companies down to small mom and pop insurance agencies, uh, if, if they're using Excel, if they in, in, uh, already appreciate and have knowledge of Excel, then uh, why not leverage that 
and offer them a, a live uh, connection to their data and a streamlined approach to reporting. So here's some information on our products. Of course, uh, if you want to learn more, it'd be great to get back with ISM to uh, schedule a, a deeper uh, you know, demonstration on this. There's plenty more that we could show you, especially when it comes to areas outside of the GL. If you want to do some custom dashboards and reporting, uh, we can offer the same sort of functionality with that live connectivity and drill down capability um, with the dashboards or reports.